Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about depression and how it's affected me throughout my life. I didn't even realise that I actually had depression. I had to go to the doctors for a, an illness that I was suffering with about 15 years ago. And while I was sitting there, the doctor said to me, is there any other issues or anything else I can help you with? And my wife was with me at the time and she turned around and she said, yeah, I think Alan's suffering from depression. Yeah, right. I went. Doctor said, well, I'll be the judge of that. Let's fill this form in and see where we go. So she filled the form in 10 questions. I answered them honestly. Well, actually, I didn't. I answered them what I thought was honest, but they weren't. <clears throat> uh, my wife was sitting there and she said, uh, I don't think that's right on some of the questions. So after answering them honestly, uh, the doctor then said, Alan, you're not depressed. I told you, you're manically depressed. What? Manically depressed, really? I don't feel manically depressed. But now looking back on it, uh, I can quite honestly say to you, yeah, I was. And I've been depressed for a long, long time. Uh, seriously depressed. To the point where I didn't even realize that I was going down that slippery road. And you still don't. I can, nowadays, obviously being suffering from depression I can actually sit there and go I know when I'm starting to feel a little bit worse for wear and, and things are starting to get on top of me but as a kid even when I was at school I had a good childhood uh, my mum and dad were loving and caring and and such forth but when you're suffering with visual impairment it doesn't matter how much love care and attention you get there are still a lot of frustrations just by silly things, silly frustrates, frustrating things, excuse me. Things that you don't realise that are actually winding you up. And I still do it, I still get wound up with silly things. If I drop a fork on the floor, then obviously you've got to get down the floor. Normal people will get down and just pick it straight up because they can see where it is. Not me, I have to get down and basically search with my hands to find it. And that can be quite frustrating. Um, and it, it does wind you up. Silly things, your letters that come through the door that you can't obviously read. So you either have to wait for someone to be able to read them to you. Or I do. I have discovered a new thing on my phone that I've downloaded and I can actually scan the document and it does read it to you. It's not perfect by any long shot. But silly things like that, not being able to drive, that's a big frustration. I'd love to have experienced the world of driving. Uh, I'd love to have gone out just jumped to the car and gone to the shops or gone to the beach. That's where I live now. I'm not far away from the beach, about two miles. It is a, uh, a small bus ride away, but it's better if you're in a car. You can just drive there, jump out, take the dog for a run, and then come straight back, you know. And it, it, it's hard. It is hard. Silly things that wind me up. Well, pretty much anything. Absolutely anything can wind you up. All depends what mood you're in and what type of day it is. I try and get out near enough every day for a walk. I find that walking, even if it's just a short walk around the block, it gets you out fresh air, helps clear your head. Um, but at the moment, because we're in the middle of this lockdown, uh, because of the pandemic, we're not allowed to go too far. We're not allowed to go within five miles. And that can be quite frustrating because you'd like to go to, say, the beach. Although the beach is two miles, there are lots of stretches of beaches where I live. And they are beautiful. Once you get on a beach, the sound of the sea and uh, you know the dog running around in front of you is absolutely great. I'm going to do another talk as well on Betsy, uh, my guide dog, retired guide dog now she is. So that'll be coming up in uh, uh, in the future. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, please. It really does help. So my words of wisdom. I don't really have any words of wisdom. All I can say to you people is just keep taking each day as it comes. And that's all I do, is I take each day as it comes. Although some days are harder than others, a lot harder than others. And you can find the slightest thing wind you up, big time. And, excuse the train going past if you can hear that. I live right next to the East Coast Main Line and uh, it can get quite noisy. And that can wind you up as well. But yeah, so all I can say to you everybody is please, you know, if you feel that you are suffering from depression or you know someone that is suffering from mental illness, 
whatever form it is, try and get them help. Because I've done that. I have got help. Uh, I'm not saying it's been easy because it hasn't and it's still every day is still a battle. Just getting out of bed in the morning is a is a fight, it's a challenge. And it takes me at least an hour, an hour and a half when I get up to actually sit down and go into a place where I know that I'm going to be fairly sociable for the rest of the day. So what you've got to do is if someone is out there that is suffering with depression, be very tactful and try and approach them about it. Because if they can get help, you never know. It may be that help that they need to come out of that dark place. And I've known a lot of people that have been in that dark place and just through my own experiences, I've been able to help them and talk to them and help them through their, their depression and their mental illness as well. And I can quite honestly say there's a few people that are now uh, been diagnosed with depression but are on the up and feeling a lot better in themselves. So, as I say, if you've got any friends or relatives that are suffering from it, please try and get them help. Try and talk to them and see if, you know, you can make a big difference. And that's all it takes. When you finish watching this video, scroll down your phone. Look for a name that you haven't spoke to for a while. Send them a message. That message can make all the difference. It can make the difference between someone suddenly realising that you do actually care and you are actually there for them. Just a simple hi makes a big difference. So as I said, please be safe, be strong. And if you are suffering from mental illness, try and get help. Whether it's talking therapies, whether it's medication. Unfortunately, I've gone down the road of, well, I don't say unfortunately, I've gone down the road of medication because the only thing that worked for me, I did go to a counsellor, but I found, to be honest, the counsellor didn't work for me. It really didn't. It, it, it was, um, I find it hard talking to people. This is really hard for me sitting here talking to a camera, but I find it really hard talking to people about depression, not because I'm embarrassed about it or anything like that. I just think that depression is something you have to get on with and you have to deal with in your own way. But for some people, talking therapy is the best and it really does help. I've known a few people, quite a few people actually, that have gone down the road of talking therapy and it's made all the difference. They've not had to go on medication and, you know, it's made their life so much easier. But if someone does talk to you about mental illness or their depression, please don't dismiss it. Sit and listen, even if you don't know what to say. Just being there and listening to someone, talking about what they're going through, what they're feeling can make all the difference. It can really help. So please, be there for a friend. Speak to you soon. Like, sh subscribe and share everybody. We need to get mental illness out there. We need to get it recognised and we need to get it sorted. There are too many people suffering, especially at this, at this moment in time with this pandemic. Be safe.